play does his thing, he is so appreciated. You know, Steph is gonna go down as probably the greatest Golden State Warrior ever, right up there with Rick Barry. But Clay Thompson is such a fan favorite in that city, and you see it here. Yeah, and, and again, you, you, Steph is gonna be the greatest warrior ever, but he's a part of the greatest team ever. Right. And obviously, as you mentioned, they're all fan favorites. I mean, Clay's one of those guys, even if you hated the Warriors, you'd love Clay. He's just that kind of personality and player, and he's got a killer mindset. You could tell, Smitty, this guy really wants to be back to where he was prior to the end. And that's what I've loved, even before these injuries, GA. He's a big time competitor. I mean, it doesn't have the rah rah like a lot of guys and scowling at guys and talking a lot, but the way he competes defensively, you know, those years when he guarded Russ, he guarded KD, he guarded LeBron, he guarded Dame, he guarded CJ, he asked him to do so much and then scored a basketball. But what I love is he's such a guy that's so, uh, I, I would say, locked in to what this game is all about winning. It didn't even phase him when they brought Kevin Durant over. He still was Klay Thompson. Right. And that's what I love. And as you can see today, he was relentless, like GA said, being able to hunt shots, trust his rehab, trust his knee, trust his Achilles. And that dunk and the way he played, those movements, he, he was natural. He wasn't thinking. He just played the game of basketball. Brian Anderson and Stan Van Gundy with 3D did a tremendous job calling the game, particularly on such a short notice that we found out that Clay was going to play on this night. We rallied the crew to, to get this game on NBA TV on a center court production. But Stan, I think, made a really important point during tonight's broadcast. T tonight, as Stan said, paraphrasing, it's not about measuring Clay Thompson tonight. It's about getting him back, celebrating him being back, and now the road forward. Okay, so now with this win tonight, the Warriors, due to tiebreakers, are back in the first spot in the Western Conference. They're back with, tied with Phoenix for the best record in the NBA. H how much pressure, now that we've gotten past all the pomp and circumstances on Clay, to go ahead and get that dynasty fire lit <laughs> again and get this team back to where they were so used to being? You know, Jared and, and Smitty, I don't think there's any pressure. Um, because prior to the injury, the expectation was to win a championship. They'd gone to five consecutive finals. Yep. And so it's going to be about how quickly can he get back up to speed. They've already proven to be a, a championship contending team prior to him coming back tonight. So it's just a matter of how long does it take him to get integrated and at their best, are they going to be good enough? Because even tonight, they won the game in, in, in somewhat of a dominating fashion, but you could still see – they have to play small. We got to wait and see if Wiseman comes back. What kind of impact he's going to have? How many minutes can he play? That's still going to be a challenge, getting him up to speed as such a young player. Yeah, I totally agree. I, I will say a guy I think we haven't given a lot of credit to, G.A. But, and, and Jared, Kavon Looney has done mm -hmm. a nice job throughout this entire season. Uh, he doesn't really have a backup. He's the only big. Belicia has size, but he doesn't bang. Uh, Wiseman is the key for me to see where they can go, you know, as far as being able to – the rigorous of going through the first round, second round, third round to win a championship. The key is how much Wiseman can give them. They can play small ball with anybody, but the game slows down a little bit. You know, when you start talking about yeah. Western Conference and then finals, that's when they're going to need some size.